Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and get started. There's a couple more people trickling, trickling in, but um, I just wanted to introduce myself. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Digital Art with P5JS webinar. Uh, my name is Joy Anderson. I'm a curriculum developer here at CodeHS. Um, and I'm also the author of our newly launched Digital Art with P5 mini course. Uh, this course is something I'm really excited about sharing with you. I think it's a super great addition to our catalog as it bridges the world of computer science and art, which are two of my passions. And we really hope that you enjoy all the content, the examples, and the new design approach to the course that were implemented to support new computer science learners. So we'll start today's session with an introduction to the P5JS library for those who are new to the library. After, we will provide you with an overview of the course, who it's for, what it covers, and show some examples of our curriculum improvements we include in the course to support different learning styles. We'll cl quickly look into the system requirements. Then I'll give you a little demo of the library and we'll end the webinar with Q&A. So no worries. Um, if you have questions, we'll answer all of those at the end. Um, and you'll be able to enter those into the Q&A feature on Zoom. All right, let's get started. First, let's explore what is P5JS. P5.js is a JavaScript library for creative coding with a focus on making coding accessible and inclusive for artists, designers, educators, and beginners, and even for advanced programmers as well. Uh, it simplifies the process of using code to create digital art, and it's also available in the browser, which is super convenient. Uh, the P5.js library was developed and maintained by an organization called the Processing Foundation, um, if you're aware of the software called Processing, you've heard of the Processing Foundation before. Uh, the Processing Foundation um, has a mission to promote software literacy within the visual arts and also visual literacy within the technical fields and to make these fields accessible to diverse communities. They have a goal to empower people of all interests and backgrounds to learn more about programming and make creative work with code especially those who might not otherwise have access to these tools and resources. So they're a super important organization in our um, ed tech space. The Processing Foundation has a number of libraries that support creative coding, but in our course, we're only focusing on using P5JS, which is already an extensive library that you can create a lot of great pieces with. So I first wanted to start by just showing you an example of what a P5.js sketch looks like. On the left, this is an example of a P5.js sketch. And on the right, you can see part of the code that is used to create the sketch on the left. This code is beginner friendly and it's easy to read. Um, and so in each lesson of this course, students are learning more and more new functions uh, to add different shapes and colors and features. Um, that they can add to their sketches. So we have a very iterative approach to teaching them um, how to create, to get closer to their masterpieces that they have in mind. Um, on the screen is a screenshot of the P5JS reference guide that's available at p5js.org um, that was created and maintained by the organization. Um, I am sharing this because in the course, students are regularly consulting the P5JS reference guide when creating their sketches. I love P5.js because it is well documented. And in this reference guide, each function comes with a description, example code, and also a runnable demo so students can see how it works. So students are encouraged to keep the documentation open in a separate tab and to use the reference guide to review different functions they have learned um, and even look up something they may have seen in the example code or just simply explore it to find something new that they wanna try. Um, I think that's a really important approach to also learn about programming is teaching students how to look up things and also learning things as you need them as well. Great, so now that we've had an introduction to what the P5J5, P5JS library is all about, um, I'm gonna go over how P5JS is used in our new mini course. So this course is designed uh, for fifth grade through 12th grade students, which is a huge grade band. So it's designed for middle school and high school. 
Um, it's also, again, a mini course that can be completed within one month. So it's a great, it's a great addition if you want something quick to introduce your students to computer science or just to JavaScript, or if your students have experience with another language, um, you could also add this to another uh, computer science course you're taking with us at, on CodeHS. So there are two main focuses in this course. Firstly, students explore the intersection of art and computer science by creating digital drawings, animations, and interactive sketches. And secondly, students are receiving an introduction to JavaScript and the importance um, of programming and important programming concepts that can be used to enhance their P5JS sketches or later on in their programming journeys with us on CodeHS and beyond. Uh, so this course was intended for students who like to explore the world of programming and or have an interest in creating different forms of art as they'll be doing that throughout the entire course. Uh, no prior coding experience is required. This course is written with the beginner in mind. So if your students don't come with program experience, they will learn everything inside the course, which is great. Um, if students do have experience, there are also extensive extension challenges for them as well. Um, so this course provides example sketches, reference guides, and fundamental programming concepts um, through each lesson that will be covered. So this course is broken down into three modules. The first is getting started with P5JS, animation, and then interactivity. So in the first module, students explore the intersection of art and coding. So students are learning the fundamental concepts of P5JS and creating their sketches using shape drawing and color functions. Uh, they're given examples of sketches, the dimensions, the color palettes, and they're instructed to recreate them using code. So in this example, students are given a piece by Picasso. So what's really fun about this unit is that students are exploring art theory, color theory, how the grid system works, um, and initially designing different types of compositions. While also on the programming side, they're learning how to call functions, they're learning what arguments or parameters are, um, they're looking at JavaScript syntax, and they're becoming familiar with how to organize their code. In the second module, students learn techniques uh, to turn their static sketches into animated sketches. So students learn how to change the values of variables, they learn what variables, how va variables are useful to us as programmers. Um, and they use that to create animations of the position, the color, and tr transformation of shapes in their sketches. So in more detail, students learn how to animate the X and Y coordinates um, to create movement of shapes. Um, they also create animation of color transitions by altering RGB values and also transforming shapes, including dilation, rotation, and translation. So it's something also that may have seen in another course, such as a math course, but now they're seeing it in an art and programming course. And the last module, the third module, students are learning about interactivity. So in this module, students explore how to create sketches that react to user input. So using system variables, which are provided by P5JS, um, students are adding conditional logic to their code that modifies the composition when a mouse or keyboard input is detected. Um, so they're given a bunch of starter code because we don't go too deep into depth about conditional logic, um, but they're given enough to create some pretty cool um, interactive pieces, uh, but they're expected to fill in the code blocks underneath the conditional statements. A lot of that code is reusable and pretty similar in nature, so if they decide to create another interactive sketch on their own, they'll be able to reuse it. Um, so in this example, this sketch draws a, a white circle wherever the cursor is positioned on the canvas, and when a mouse click is detected, it changes the color um, back to pink, um, it essentially teaches students how to create a basic paint tool using code. So you could imagine how students could probably expand on this, you know, add different colors based on different input. 
um, and create a more advanced paint tool as well. So this course was built with a culturally responsive lens that supports learners of all backgrounds. And to meet these different learning styles, we have made some improvements to the curricular assets that exist in the course. For example, throughout the course, students explore new concepts with interactive connections such as these. Um, they're basically small widgets with short descriptions that review concepts that are covered in the slides or videos at the start of each uh, lesson. So just to explain what each of these are, on the left, we have a connection that helps students understand how the grid system works. Um, so as students move their cursor, they're able to see how the X and Y coordinates change um, as they change to different locations on the coordinate grid. Uh, the connection in the center allows students to create their own color palette um, and teaches them how to use the color picker and extract RGB values from it. And the connection on the, on the right is from our interactivity unit, um, and it shows them the key code of a key that's being pressed on the keyboard. So students are able to learn something and then try it for themselves using these connections, which is super important and useful. We also created some visual slides that contain less wording and more showing. So for example, here is a slide from the slide deck from the animation module where students are learning about frames and frames per second. So if I demonstrate this moving, for example. So words and shapes on the slides are animated to demonstrate a point that's being um, explained and I think that helps students focus on one idea at a time. So not overloading them with too much information and then also demonstrating um, some motion rather than just having some static slides. Uh, here's another example of that. Um, this one was from the same slide deck. It's just to demonstrate as we increase the frame rate, how that impacts the smoothness of the motion, for example, in this case of a rocket. So students are able to see and compare, uh, notice and wonder um, the different changes before trying it out for themselves in the code. Great. So now that I've hopefully got you excited about the content of the course, let's go over some of the system requirements for this course. So the P5JS library um, in, is available in the browser. JavaScript is a programming language that's broadly available and massively supported across all common browsers and all browsers should have a JavaScript interpreter built in, which means that P5JS programs can generally run um, in any browser that's available on students' computers. Um, so the P5JS library is available on CodeHS. It's also available in the sandbox, so there's no additional installations required. I also wanted to provide a quick tour of our IDE and what you can expect when creating a P5JS sandbox program. Um, on the left is the editor. This is where students are writing their code. On the right, uh, below the run and clear buttons is the output. So at the top, you'll see that's where the P5JS sketch will be generated, but the box below the JavaScript, I'm sorry, the box below the sketch is a JavaScript console. So if your students may have some advanced uh, JavaScript background, or they want to create something more advanced in their program, and they wanted to console log something to, you know, the terminal, they're able to still do that using uh, our sandbox program. Uh, so we, I just wanted to highlight that that's also available. Great. So before ending today's webinar, I wanted to give a quick demo of P5JS. Um, so in this demo, I'll be creating a sketch of one of the projects that's available in the course. So at the end of each unit, there is a project prompt. Uh, this is the project prompt for the end, unit, end of unit project for unit one. So in this project, students are asked to create their own emoji. So students can explore hundreds of emojis that exist, and then create their own. I really like the open-ended nature of these projects because there's like endless possibilities that students can um, make uh, so they can make something super simple or super advanced. As you can see, the emojis have a number of different shapes that students can try to make. So they're given also 
a list of program project requirements, including filling out a project proposal, which I will show you on the next slide, and also some minimum requirements they need to complete, which could include trying to include two different shapes and two different colors. So here's the project proposal. So students will have to fill in the project title, description. They're given a space to sketch out their ideas before jumping into the editor, and also a space to write down some ideas for their color palette they wish to use in their sketch. I think it's really important to give students space to plan out their ideas before um, writing them down. Um, that way, um, if they have a lot of small, small shapes that are in their sketch, um, they know how to, they know what the X and Y coordinates are or where they wish to position it on the sketch before uh, coding it. All right, so throughout the course, uh, instead of saying let's code, I do say let's sketch at the end of each lesson. Um, this is like the nomenclature that's used uh, by the Processing Foundation. They wanted programming with P5JS to feel as natural as drawing something in a sketchbook. So I always like to say, let's sketch. We're heading over to the editor. So let's do a quick demo. All right, so here is uh, what it would look like for the project. Students can first read through the project prompt and the requirements. You can also see that in the exercise tab here. And I'm just gonna walk through how um, this library works. I might move a little bit fast, but don't worry. A lot of this is done in greater detail in the actual course. So for P5JS, there are two um, functions that it calls automatically. First is the setup function, which is called once, and then the draw function that is called infinitely. So the setup function is primarily used to just set up the canvas. So you can think of setting up the canvas side, setting up like initial fonts and backgrounds. That's done first in the setup function. So if I wanted to create a canvas, I'll call a function called create canvas. I wanna make my canvas 500 by 400 pixels. And I want the background to be, um, let's say light blue. So I can actually pass a string with one of the 140 um, available colors. Sorry if I run this. One moment. You can see it avail it's available on the right. Um, I can also enter um, single values here for a grade scale values from zero to 255. So if I wrote 200, it would get a grade scale value or if I wanted something that was more of a, um, maybe like a sage green, I could also write in the RGB values. Cool. All right, so let's now draw our emoji. First thing we'll need is a circle. Hmm, how do I draw a circle? So let's take a look quickly at the P5JS reference guide. Here you can see a large list of different shapes 2D primitives, 3D, et cetera. Uh, students can also search things here in the reference. So if I wanted to draw an ellipse, I could search that. Again, they're given a description, uh, some sample code, a runnable demo, and also more details around the syntax and parameters that are needed. So this takes four parameters. It has one optional parameter actually. So we want the X and Y coordinates, the width and the height of the ellipse. So Let's draw a ellipse. Um, I want it to be at the center. So half of 500 is 250, half of 400 is 200. And I'll make it 150 pixels wide, 150 pixels in height. If I run that, now I have a circle. Cool. Another way I could have um, set the X and Y coordinates is I could have used the system variables that are set by P5 once you create a canvas called width and height. So I could write width divided by two, and height divided by two, and that would give me the same result. Okay, um, when I look at these emojis, I notice that they're filled with yellow and they kind of have a brown border. So I'm gonna change the color of them. 
So one way I can do that is I can change the fill of a shape. So here I call a function called fill, and then I pass three arguments to it with the RGB value as parameters. So above the shape, I'm gonna write fill, and I want the color with the RGB value 255 to 50, zero. By the way, these are just colors in the color palette that I have preset. Um, we don't expect students to know these colors by heart. Cool. And to change the border, uh, there is a function called stroke. So we write 120, 90, and 23, which gives us a, a chocolate brown. It's a little bit hard to see, but the color of the circle is now, it's now um, brown. Cool. So that's our head. Let's add some eyes. So I'm going to create another ellipse. Um, I'm going to center it also in the center of the screen. So width over two, right over two. And I want it to be what, 15 pixels wide and 30 pixels in height. And when I run that, we have an eye. It's in the middle of my face. Uh, it kind of looks like a nose, not an eye. So I want to change its X position to move a little bit more to the left. Uh, so I would actually have to offset it by a couple of pixels by subtracting. Um, so we, X is zero on the left side of the screen. And on this side of this, the canvas, it is 500. So I would subtract and it'll move to the left. So let's subtract that by 20. And we see it moves to the left. And then if I want to move it upward, I actually have to subtract. So Y actually increases as it moves down. This is backwards than like what we've learned in math. But, uh, students learn that in the course and the interactive sketches, um, excuse me, interactive connections helps them with that. Let's create another I. So I like the Y position to be the same, but instead of subtracting 20, let's add 20. Cool, so now we have two eyes. I'm gonna also add a mouth. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to just paste in the starter code for the mouth, but it's using a shape called arc. In these cases, these are this is like a good um, chance to allow students to look that up on their own, ask questions, um, and explore how that works. Cool, so now I have a smile. I'm going to also fill in the color of the eyes and the mouth brown. So again, I'm gonna call our fill function and fill it in with a brown color. I'm also leaving comments throughout the code and students learn how to do that as well in the class. Almost there. Last thing I wanna to add to my emoji is a smile. So I'm going to create some white teeth. So I want the fill to be white, which has a 255 uh, grayscale value. And then again, for the sake of time, I'm going to copy and paste and voila, I have a smile. Great, so that's pretty simple. It's pretty readable. Um, students should go back and forth between the reference guide and the editor to try out new things to create their um, own emoji. And I'm super excited to see what they come up with. Great. So again, thank you so much for stopping by today to learn more about our new exciting course, Digital Art with P5JS. Um, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to enter them now into the Q&A section and we will answer them. I'll just give it a couple more. So, would you recommend pairing this mini course with 
with any full year semester long courses. Um, yeah, so again, uh, this is a one month mini course. Um, it's written in JavaScript. So if you want to use uh, this course either as an introduction to JavaScript uh, before you do one of our JavaScript courses or even our web development courses, I think that would be a great fit. Um, if you maybe were taking like an AP course or even a course you may have concluded before the end of the school year, this would be a really fun exploratory thing for them to complete at the end. Um, a lot of the concepts they learn in JavaScript um, could also be brought into the course. So if you're taking any of our JavaScript courses and then take this course, it also will be fun. Um, Matt, do you have any other recommendation, recommendations of where this course might be a good fit? No, I think those were great. Um, web development would be really great. Um, they use some animations in there and this would just be able to extend on that. Um, and then also, uh, yeah, like Joy said, I think that the any of the introduction uh, JS courses, even with the uh, game design in JS, any of those would be would be great to, uh, um, to have P5 maybe as like a, a extension to that um, or even embedded within that. You want to spend some time with P5JS library. Um, I think those are great um, options. Thanks for your question. Um, yes, it would be really fun as an after school club too. Um, I really like that this course is interdisciplinary. So if you have a graphic designs program at your school, a uh, computer or even an arts program, I could also see this being introduced to students as well. Um, there's a bunch of color theory and art theory in, within the course. Um, so it really translates well from an arts classroom into like a computer lab setting as well. Is there also a sandbox program option? Yes. So we have it available in our sandbox. Um, if you go to the toolbox, our sandbox, I'll show you quickly. If you go under JavaScript, just be sure to click P5JS and you're able to start creating a P5JS sketch in the sandbox. Any other questions before we close out? All right, if there are no further questions, then I'll end by again, thanking you all for coming. And I look forward to seeing what you and your students create. Thank you so much and take care.